December 2017 but first let me tell you how that happened so to tell this story I have to go back to the beginning I have to go back to when I was 16 years old when I made a decision that I will never get married I always felt that women were looked down upon, that marriage stripped women of their rights as human beings, that it just gave their husbands an, an opportunity to lord it over them, to treat them like crap, to take away any chance that they might have for a decent life. But I didn't tell anybody about this decision I had made. It was something I resolved quietly within myself. I didn't want anybody that would try to persuade me that my situation would be different. I had this plan in my head of how I was going to be this independent, man-hating boss chick, right? And then I got saved just before I turned 18. About a year after I got saved, God spoke to me and told me that it was his intention for me to get married. I was on a call with a girl who had prayed for me and I started speaking in tongues and she started to prophesy over me. This was the first time in my life that I was encountering the gift known as word of knowledge. I didn't even know that it was possible for somebody to tell you things about yourself and they've never met you before. And as she was talking to me, she she said, and I will never forget, she said, God said you and your husband. I was like, wait, hold up. Me and my what? I was so upset. I can't tell you how upset I was at God for wanting to give me a man. I, I can remember telling her, you know, I, I don't really think I want to get married and as she started to tell me oh yes definitely because what God has for you you cannot fulfill it without your husband and as, she, and as she started to say it I suddenly saw myself in a garden and I will never forget this picture that the Lord showed me I was wearing a beautiful white wedding dress in a garden my husband was standing in front at what looked like an altar in the middle was the priest the pastor who was going to you know officiate this wedding and to my left was jesus christ and three of them were standing there looking at me and waiting for me to walk up to the altar and that vision went to me and i was just like oh my god obviously i didn't see the face of the person i just saw that it was a man who was wearing a gray suit so i started to pray about this man that i was supposed to get married too and I would pray about him I would pray for him I would ask God to tell me about him I'm like okay God you want me to get married so tell me about this person that you want me to be married to and I started to have dreams I never saw the um, person's face and because God hadn't told me the name of the person I didn't know what the person looked like I believed that I should just give every guy that I met an audience because you never know who that person is going to be. If I met a guy that I thought I liked or that was kind of cute, what I would do is I would tell him, okay, let's go out on a date. I would hear him out, hear why he says he likes me, hear why he says he wants to be in a relationship with me, hear what he really has to offer me. And then I would come back and pray about it and say, God, what do you think about this person? And Almost every single time, the answer was no. It's almost as if something is holding me back from actually going forward with these people. Something will just be holding me back and I'll just keep on feeling like, if I can just wait out, I might see something better. And so I would always just say no. Then I met someone that I was interested in and I prayed. I said, God, this guy seems like a pretty awesome guy. I want to date him. But God was silent. I didn't hear anything. 
and that really troubled me i went to everyone i knew who was a prophet who could see who could hear i was like please tell me whether this person is the one and you know nobody could tell me anything everybody was just like just keep praying you know and this guy was also on me like you have to give me an answer i didn't feel that release to date him or to go into a relationship with him i couldn't say yes i didn't know in my spirit that it was good there were there were still doubts and i had always believed that whoever would be the person that i would be with i would know with a knowing that leaves no room for doubt so this was in november i had a dream that i was sitting on a stage and i was ministering to people you know and i woke up from that dream and i was like hmm okay and then in December, it started coming really strongly that I should host a worship event. And I was very nervous, you know, will people come? <laughs> what am I going to do? I don't feel like I can really do anything spiritually. I decided to be obedient. And that was where I met my husband. He came to the worship event. And after the event, you know, we're all taking pictures. So I saw him, he was lingering at the back. And I, 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 I walked up to him and I was like, hey, would you come, like to come and take pictures with us? And he was just like, no. So yeah, my first impression of my husband, I didn't like him. I thought he was snobby, stuck up. I was like, meh. So we spoke briefly for about two minutes and that was it. We didn't even exchange numbers, nothing. He went his way, I went my way. And then the next month, God spoke to me and said, isn't it? If you should you should start something where you bring people together and you share the things that have taught you with them. So that was how I started the True Christianity platform. And my husband joined this group. We didn't talk for months whilst he was on the group. He was just another person on the group. And then one day he just messaged me and he was like, oh, hi, how are you? And you know, it's kind of be easy being such a young person, doing all of these things that you're doing. I was like, oh yes, it's so hard, blah, blah, blah. We spoke, he just encouraged me and that was it. Fast forward to a few months after that, I took a retreat. I switched off my phone. It was just me and God, I was praying. At that time, God brought new fire into my spirit and I was so into it. I remember one night, I stayed up almost the whole night just praying and worshipping God and I was telling God, God, I love you so much. I don't even want to get married. Even if you never bring anybody to me, I'm okay, I'm satisfied. And I'm not saying this as like a three-step manual for you to do. I'm just sharing my testimony. I was vowing never to get married because I loved God that much and I was just like, now I don't want to get married, not because... I'm a man-hating woman <laughs> but because I love you so much God that I am satisfied in you God spoke to me then and there and he said it is time for you to meet your husband I remember I was just like peace <laughs> I thought it was the devil speaking to me I thought it was Satan trying to put a man in my head because he was trying to not make me focused on the you know work of God and God didn't say anything to me again about it I finally ended my retreat. So I came back to True Christianity and someone reached out to me and was like, oh, you have to thank you know, Isimeme. Whilst you were away, he picked up the slack. He was checking up on everyone. He was so great on the group. I was like, oh my goodness. So I reached out to him and I was like, hey, thank you so much for you know stepping in while I was away. I'm so grateful for that. And he was like, nah, smalls. Now the, the, the person who had told me about Isimeme also told me that Ismeme was kind of like a pastor or something at his church. So I was telling him, oh, I heard that you are, you are a pastor. Like, thank you so much for humbly serving on my small group, you know. And he was like, oh, no, he's not a pastor. He's just like a home fellowship leader. And he was like, hey, you should come to the fellowship. And I was, I've never really been the socializing type. Thing. So I was actually going to be like, no, because the thought of leaving my house was just too much stress. But something in me just said, go. So I said, okay, I'm going to go. So I went to this fellowship and honestly, I feel like that was where it happened. It was as if I was seeing his cinema for the first time. You know, it was just everything about him, the way he talked without feeling like he needed to impose himself on anyone. He was leading so well with quiet humility he was just so manly like everything about him was just beautiful to look at and i was just like oh my god what is happening 
and after the um, fellowship he came over to say hi you know he was so friendly and i was all of a sudden shy because <laughs> I was I was just starting to have feelings for him out of nowhere, but he wasn't even looking at me that way. <laughs> he dropped me home after the fellowship, and I remember I went in. I was living with my auntie at that point, and I and I told her, "Oh my God, I think I like someone," and she was just like, "You better behave yourself." So I was like, "You know what? This is the enemy. He's trying to you know dis distract me because I have renewed my you know commitment to God." I'm not going to allow myself to be distracted. So that night I prayed. I said, God, I reject everything the enemy is trying to plant in my life. I'm focused on you. And then I went to bed. And I had a dream when I slept. I dreamt that I was sitting here. Ismeme was sitting here. And there was a man sitting opposite us. And the man had a huge stack of files, right? And this man was opening the files. He will, he will open a file, he will drop it here, he will open a file, he will drop it. And me and Isi were just sitting down and watching him. Finally, he opened one file and he looked at Isi Meme and he looked at me and he smiled and he said, congratulations, she's your wife, he's your husband. And I remember in that dream, I jumped up and I was like, no, never. I was shouting, I was like, this cannot be. And Isi Meme was just shocked, just sitting down like, hmm. I woke up like, I pulled down every proud tongue, everything trying to raise itself above the name of Jesus in my life. Nothing is going to distract me in Jesus' name. I started to cancel the dream because I was, I was like, I'm not going to be distracted in Jesus' name. But without my wanting to, my affection for Isimeme was growing in a way that I could not contain. It was, it was almost like I've never felt this way before. That was scary. It felt like it was out of my hands. True Christianity was going to have an event. We usually used to have gatherings where we would meet up and talk and just watch TV and laugh and eat. That was the day that changed everything. I think that was the day Simeme started to look at me differently. I don't really know what happened that day, but I just know that there was just this thing between us. The air was just having electricity. He just started looking at me different, like, hmm. We came back home and this man just suddenly started texting me, like, every day. He would text me, like, hey, how are you? While all of this was happening, I was also praying to say, God, I'm really starting to like this guy in a way I don't think I've liked anybody before. You know, it, it, this just feels different. It feels very fast. It feels like I cannot, you know, control it and that's something else with the other guys i've been able to you know control how far i wanted it to go how 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 serious i actually wanted it to be but with isimeme it felt like the you know control and the brakes had been taken out of my hands and this was just a wild fast ride right so about a month after we started talking like every day um i went to camp i went to nyc camp for those who are not nigerians watching this nyc camp is the time after your college or university edu education where you go to serve the country nigeria for one year so they will send you to a different state and you go and live there and work there for one year and then you're done serving the nation but before you go there to work you have to go to somewhere that is called camp for three weeks where you'll be with people in your age bracket and you do sort of you know bonding activities i feel like that experience bonded us and made us closer to each other i remember when i was in camp that was when i prayed for real and i said god i like this guy a lot and it's clear that he likes me a lot and i don't want to continue if he's not my husband i didn't say if he's someone i can date this time but i prayed and i said god if this guy is going to be my husband when i come back to lagos let him give me a letter and in the letter let him tell me how he feels about me then i will know that he's my husband quite easy so i came back to lagos this man was calling me every day texting me every day like yo we should hang out we should meet up blah blah blah, blah. So I came over to see him at his house. He said he was going to make pancakes. I came over that day and Isi was like, oh wait, I, want, I have to give you something. And he went and came back with a letter. <laughs> I remember when he was holding it out to me, I was like, whoa, what is this? So I took the letter, I opened it. And in the letter, Isimeme was writing how he felt about me. And this is the beautiful thing about this letter, right? Ismeme was writing about how much he loved my voice. Now, prior to this, my voice is the one thing I had hated with 
all of my heart i felt like it was too masculine it wasn't feminine enough i didn't sound like oh hi i was just there like god said the fact that ismail was saying he loved my my voice was just like wow it was beautiful and i remember i was like oh crap does this mean this guy is my husband so i went home i was just turning it over in my mind and i remember i called him and i asked him why did you write me that letter and he was like oh you know when i was having quiet time that morning god impressed it on my heart to write you a letter i was just like what <laughs> oh my god so i told him that you know when i was in camp i prayed and i said god if this guy is my husband they let him write me a letter when i come back to lagos i let him tell me how he feels and he was just like wow and then Ismail told me that he had been praying to and asking God if I was his wife and that actually God had confirmed to him that I was his wife. I didn't know this. He had never said it to me once throughout the time that we were talking and I was so grateful for that. He never ever said, God said, you're my wife. No, he just kept it to himself and prayed to God to show me basically. And it was just multiple confirmations that we were supposed to be together at that point i was just like oh my gosh i had never seen anything so dramatic i was still a bit hesitant because i was still like eh, i'm not really sure if i still want to be in a relationship with you because what if we're just wrong right <sighs> this memory is amazing i told him let's just be friends this memory said i don't want to be your friend i want a relationship with you and i was speechless because i had never had a guy just be so upfront about what he wanted and be so clear about it i still tried to tell him okay just give me some time to think about it i asked for like two days i remember when i was praying holy spirit told me straight up i've already told you the answer at this point you're just you're just trying to waste time because i don't know what else you want me to tell you he's the one that you've been waiting for and that was how me and Ismaime got into a relationship I'm still going to release subsequent videos about what dating was like what kind of boundaries we had um, how Ismaime proposed to me just all of those intricacies of our dating process so I hope this video was enjoyable and I hope it was fun <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comment section below if you're someone who is waiting, what other topics you want me to cover. And make sure you share this video on all the class groups that you're on, all the WhatsApp groups on Instagram so it can reach as many people as possible and encourage people to trust God with their relationships. I will see you in my next video. Bye.